Hey guys, it's Josh from Gym Direct, and today we are here in the heart of the Sydney CBD chatting with Peter Walton, the owner of Be Athletic. We talked about the CrossFit Games, overcoming burnout, and how they became one of the fittest gyms in all of Australia. Welcome to Behind the Brand. From Gym Direct, and I'm here with Peter Walton from Be Athletic. Pete, thanks so much for sitting down with us and having a bit of a chat. Cool, mate. Thanks for having me. No problem. I want to get started from the beginning for you guys. Obviously, there is a rich history within the gym, and you know the product that you've created. Can you take us back to the beginning of Be Athletic to where it is now? Yeah, cool. Well, like Be Athletic, we were CrossFit Athletic originally. Um, my brother and Christian started up uh, CrossFit Athletic on the Northern Beaches. Uh, we started in a little warehouse there in 2009. I was currently doing some different work. I was actually in the construction industry working as, as an apprentice. Um, I was training in the gym, um, coming from team sport background. We all did, my brother, Christian, myself. Um, just absolutely love what CrossFit had to offer, bringing in obviously the, the mixed modality of training. Um, so I was training at the gym every other day. Um, I'd previously done, before I did my travels and come back and got into construction, I'd done exercise science at uni. Um, and Christian, my brother, said to me, it's an absolute no-brainer if you're not enjoying what you're doing, come and start working for us in the gym. So I started working for them in around 2010. Um, so yeah, started off as a small little CrossFit gym on the Northern Beaches um, and then expanded and moved from our original site still in Brookvale on the Northern Beaches in 2010. Um, and then we were training, uh, training out of there for a while and got approached by one of the members there who said the CBD is screaming for a, for a, for a CrossFit mm -hmm. gym um, and he would like to back us and come in here. Um, so I left uh, Brookie and Christian left Brookie as coaches and we found this premises in 2011 um, and then we moved on in here. So we had Brookvale at the time and then obviously CrossFit Athletic City. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, cool. So that's how it all started up. Yeah. Huge. So what made you all, I, I know you've talked about the mixed modality of CrossFit. What really drove you to go, this is the methodology of training and this is how we're going to structure our business moving forward? Um, I just think the, the, the fun aspect of it. I mean, it's just the, the combined, obviously, you've got your Olympic weightlifting, your gymnastics. It took going to the gym away as just going to the gym. Like people suddenly had a purpose to want to train. You're not going to the gym because you're necessarily just trying to lose body fat or anything like that. Look, once you got into it, you were trying to obviously start PBing lifts and learn new gymnastic skills. And the byproduct of that is obviously the results you get physically but I think it changes the, the mode of I'm going to the gym for my physical appearance to I'm going to the gym for performance yeah. and I'm going to the gym to have fun and learn. Yeah. And I think that is what we saw as the best thing of CrossFit. Yeah, sure. for when it first started and I think still today. Yeah. So in 2011, CrossFit brought out the teams. You yep. guys obviously were killing it. I mean, your resume, or well, I should say, you know, CrossFit or B-Athletics resume, whether it be at regionals or the games is fantastic. Yep. Probably one of the fittest gyms in Australia. That might be my just biased opinion, but Thank what, you. how did that sort of, you know, did that kind of go, okay, there's, a, there's an avenue for us to really motivate our members to go, hey, there is this end goal here. If you push hard enough, we can work into that create, uh, competitive space. Yeah, most definitely. Um, well, I, I think when they opened up the teams, it opened up a lot more, and, on, and I say the opportunity, obviously, to then compete at a regional or, or world game level. Like, don't get me wrong, as you would know, any, anyone who's ever been in a team who makes it to the regionals is a phenomenal Absolutely. athlete, yep. freak athlete, yep. right? Um, but it, it certainly opened up that aspect. And then it opened up also literally like that team sport environment where you're all competing and training together all year round to obviously that goal of making the regionals and then obviously if you do well at the regionals then obviously making the world games yeah. as, as a back so i think it created a lot of fun for the gym um and having those competitive athletes in the gym training twice a day for all our members who would be training with them and around them it just sparked people to obviously push harder and enjoy their training more. Yeah. Did you ever lean on that, hey, we have gone to the games, we are like we've gone to regionals. Did it help with the business marketing, I guess you could say, or yeah. did you lean on it at all? Yes, as a draw card and yeah. definitely as exposure, especially back then, um, exposure for obviously people to see your brand. 
Like you knew us yep. from the regionals and heard us, you yep. know, when we were competing down in Wollongong and things like that. So definitely from an exposure po point of view, yes. Um, which then obviously led people to know who you were as a brand. Um, a lot of good athletes did come across and join our Brookvale where we ran our, our competitive program out of to specifically compete then. So yes, we did gain some members that way. But as any CrossFit gym, like 99% of your gym members are your, your everyday gym members. Um, so I think yes, exposure wise, but I'd only probably brought in a handful of people who actually wanted to compete at that level. Sure. You've mentioned before, obviously we're in the heart of the Sydney CBD. How have you found that challenge of trying to get clients that are you know nine to five as opposed to a regional gym which is close to their house like have you had a challenge being in the cbd um pre oh, we were just talking about this before pre-covid no not really i've got to be honest because people would then train around obviously their work schedules um people either come in and do we've got three cl morning classes they come in and train before work um, our lunch classes are really popular yeah. so we've so got like the 11 45 12 45 yep. classes at lunch and then evening classes, 5, 5.30 and 6.30 in the evening. So people kind of train around their day. So I think, yeah, the everyday athlete can come and train in the CBD and that's what people really enjoy about it. And I think the fact that they turn up to the gym, they're in here training with their mates, they don't have to worry about what they're doing for the day, they don't have to worry about what am I gonna train, what am I gonna warm up, how am I gonna do this? They turn up, we warm them up, we get the, you know, the skills going and then we rip in, so sure. I think that's what people like about it and it obviously makes it easy to fit into their day. For sure, when you, I guess, look at CrossFit's methodology, it's all about community. Yep. How important is community here at Be Athletic, whether it be here in CBD or the one in Brookvale, how important is that and what do you guys do to help foster that as well? Oh, it's massive. Like, I think if you ask anyone in the CrossFit community, the greater CrossFit community, I think it's a wonderful thing. Um, yeah, we've been so lucky to have a massive community in, in all our gyms. We, had, we did have Monoval for a while, especially like when we had teams competing at the regionals, you know, we'd have, you know, one, 100 yeah. to 150 people come down, fill up sections of yep. the stands, cheering our athletes on because obviously they knew and trained with the guys. So that would be across, like even though we were competing out of our Brookvale gym, we would get at least 50, 60 people from the city who might not have even met them personally going down there to cheer on their team and their community because they're a part of what was CrossFit yeah, Athletic or now sure. Athletic, right? I think that's a huge part of it. Um, we do a lot of social events, um, you know, we do birthday parties, we have a big Christmas event. We're doing this evening, uh, Friday night's in-house games day where we're all dressing up and, you know, we've got partner workouts that we do. At the end, we have a few beers and a feed um, and then a few members will most likely kick on together and, uh, you know, so, yeah, lots of, lots of different social aspects that we do along the year as well. For sure. When you look at, I guess, the business model for yourself, you can take a step back. People may see you, Pete, for maybe an hour a day. What do you do outside of here to make sure that you're at your best when you do come in here for your members? Um, oh, well, we had a chat. I, um, I'm trying to get a little bit better at that. Um, I've got a family and kids and I was burning a little bit too hard, especially post-COVID, trying to keep the business rolling. Mm -hmm. Um, as a result, I had a little bit of a, of a crash, unfortunately. Um, but outside of it now, now that I've, you know, coming out of that, um, I try to get an hour or two to myself and like, you know, go to the beach. I live on the Northern Beaches, um, go to the beach, go for a surf. Um, I live near Manly Dam, you know, go for a run around Manly Dam. That's the kind of way to recharge. And, and then the rest of the time is literally family and gym. Yeah, so. sure. I guess everything that's going on in the world today, it's all about mental health. The awareness that we have, like, you know, we, I speak to multiple gym owners every day, mm. and the biggest thing that they always talk about is mental health, not only of their members, but themselves. How important is it for you to, you know, have that awareness, not only for yourself, but for your entire community as well? Oh, most definitely. I mean, I was, I was saying to you earlier, I mean, we've been in here now for 11, 12 years, and a lot of our members have been here, you know, six, seven, eight, nine years, and you see the highs and lows that life, especially in a stressful environment, like working in the corporate sector in the CBD, you see people go through massive peaks and troughs. Um, and just having that, you know, the doors always open mentality to be able to chat about, you know, the good times, the bad times, and everything in between with your members is so important, you know? People have, I would like to think, and I would, I would say lent on me for, you know, support and advice over the years with, you know, things that they've been going through and hardships. And I was lucky enough to, you know, really make myself, I suppose you'd call it vulnerable mm -hmm. 
and I put it out to our members that I was really going through a tough patch and you know, a really hard patch where I had to, to take some time off from work and the amount of support that this gym has shown me, mate, is phenomenal. So, you know, I think it's like anything in life, you know, if you give a little, you, you get it back, right? So sure. I think our gym as a whole, if you ask a lot of our members, it's not just me, like literally so many in this members in this gym have supported each other through so many different aspects of life, being kids, you know, mental health, whatever it is, we really can lean on each other, which is awesome. Sure. I guess in this time of, you know, uncertainty with a lot, you know, that's gone on through COVID, it kind of rattled a lot of people. How was, were people surprised that, you know, Pete, superstar owner, struggled, had struggles? Um, more so, sorry, I'll just grab a sip of water right, one yeah, um, More so, I think more so with my personality, because um, I, I live up here a little yeah. bit, I've got that, you know, energy, pretty, yeah, energy or, I'm a very kind of eccentric person. Um, people were like, oh, but, you know, the comment I got was, you're the happiest person, how are you struggling? Like, you're always up, you're always happy, you're always on the go, how are you struggling? But I think that, you know, sometimes we can, even if you are that, you know, you can also have your demons as well, right? And, and especially burnout like I suffered. Um, so, yeah, like I think that was the most question. People like, I can't believe it. You know, you, you're so happy and you're always on and you're always positive and you're always this. But yes, I didn't necessarily have depression. I love my life. I'm very grateful for everything that I have, including, you know, this gym. But at the end of the day, I was battling anxiety and unfortunately I wasn't really recognising it and accepting it, even though a few people had told me that they were worried about yeah. it and, and saw the warning signs coming on for me. Yeah. I kind of was like that, nah, I can keep doing it, I can yeah. keep pushing, I can keep pushing yeah. until I couldn't. Yeah, which is right? fair enough. Yeah, yeah so, um, yeah. It's crazy times. It's, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. So it's funny because you hear that all the time, especially whether it be celebrities, oh, you're the last person I would have expected to go through something like that. Yeah, so most definitely. It's, um, it takes a lot, which is, you know, kudos to you. It takes a lot to go, hey, I'm actually struggling and I've got this issue. And the fact that, you know, to some people, you're their idol in here. And for you to go, hey, look, I'm human. I have these issues is, it's a huge thing. Yeah, so it's you've, good. You've and look, uh, and since that, I mean, since I sent a big post out to the members, you know, a few people have reached out to me and said, you know, I've never really spoken about this and, you know, X, Y and Z and this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm going through. So it, it can, I suppose, open a door for someone else to actually go, wow, okay, if, if you're cool talking about it, I can maybe have a chat with you. So, but I think, I think that in society today is getting so much better. Yeah. Like we were saying earlier, you know, 20 years ago, this would have been swept under the mm. carpet. I wouldn't have wanted to yeah. tell anyone. I probably would have taken time off work, but never would have said anything, right? Yeah. Whereas now, like, it's a, a lot more accepted and a lot more out there and you would be, I think a lot of people would be so surprised to know that how many people they know in their everyday life mm. suffer from, you know, lots of different mm. things in their life. And I think it's, people are getting better at, at being able to be open about it. Yeah, I appreciate that as well. So, I mean, talking about running the business side of things, I'd love to get your thoughts on the CrossFit. So obviously there's, a, I think, you know, a lot of people would say the peak was maybe around 2015, 2016, 2017, and it's kind of dropped off. There's been a lot of people that have decided to unaffiliate. Yep. What's your thoughts on how the CrossFit scene uh, has gone and the direction it's gone, and has it affected your business because of the way that larger level has gone? Um, uh, okay, well, okay, I'll start, I'll start with, I mean, for me, I, I, this is all my personal course, opinion, yeah, right? Yeah. I think a big thing, a big mistake that they made was when they originally changed it from you have to compete in a team for a gym and you have to represent that gym and train in that gym and change it to super teams and you can yeah. train out of anywhere and compete out of anywhere and you could be training in Singapore and compete yeah. for a team in Sydney. I think that lost a lot of what... For, uh, this is just speaking from my gym and speaking from my members' perspective because so many people have said... It's a big shame because then you don't know your athletes personally. Mm -hmm. So when we used to compete under CrossFit Athletic, we had our crew training out of Brookvale. They'd all train together. Everyone knew them. Even if the, you know, the city guys didn't get down there, they'd see them at social events and all this sort of stuff. You had genuinely a team to go and support. So even if you're never making the games yourself, like I unfortunately never made the regionals or anything, even though you know, I was pushing pretty hard for it. 
I had my crew that I could go and support down there, right? Whereas now that they've brought in these super teams, and don't get me wrong, by bringing in super teams, the level of CrossFit, if you like watching amazing mm. stuff, is just phenomenal. Sure. What these teams can do is just out of control. But it's taken away that community aspect for me. And I think that was a huge mistake that they did for the regionals, especially Wollongong, where it used to go off down there. For sure, it definitely did. When it comes to, I guess, programming, it's yep. one of the things that takes up a lot of the coaches' time. Is that yep. something that you're doing? Is it something that um, any other senior members are doing? Like, it does take a lot of time. So yep. how do you plan and execute programming? Um, so at the moment, we, we follow, for our CrossFit program, we follow Proven at the moment, yep. um, which is going pretty well because obviously it does free up time. We programmed our own CrossFit program for... Oh goodness, the best part of 10, 11 years. Um, so at the moment we, we've got, sorry, I'm pointing to the board yeah, so I won't be able to right. see. Um, we've we'll got, do a B-roll, we'll set something up guys, make got, sure we um, get that organized. So. A metabolic conditioning program. Yep. Um, and we've also got a functional strength program. Right. So we do all our own programming for our metabolic conditioning and our functional strength. For anyone that knows CrossFit, met, metabolic conditioning, Metcon. So it's just uh, more strength and cardiovascular conditioning. We've taken the high-end gymnastics out of it and the highest-end lifting, so we'd never snatch in it. Outside of that, it's all about you know volume, strength, and conditioning. So it's, I'd say in our gym, especially in the CBD, probably it'd be our most popular program now. About 70% of our members are doing it um, because it's just got that really fun variety, mixed modality training every other day, um, and people who aren't necessarily concerned about wanting to perfect a snatch always get obviously a really good workout and can work their strength and cardio and that. And then the functional strength being pure strength program, lots of core, lots of accessory type work. For sure. So, you know, your squat deadlift press with all your accessories thrown yeah, in. Yeah, for sure. Being a business owner and managing, you know, hundreds of clients, how have you managed the, I guess, growth and you know, maybe like a little bit of a setback, especially through that COVID time. Mm. How have you kind of managed and work your way through that to still be standing beyond the COVID years? Um, mate, it comes back to community. I mean, I think a lot of CrossFit gyms did this as well. And this is where a lot of gyms, I think, struggled, especially through the lockdowns and stuff like that. We had such an amazing community that like all our members said, you know, if you give us a piece of kit, we did all the online stuff, the Zoom, you know, the Zoom, um, classes and then when they opened up parks we met all our members at different parks around so the community stuck by us which kept us going through those really hard times especially in here when you know you're still paying exorbitant amount and rent and things like that um, the community sticking by you we literally gave out every piece of kit we, we gave out rowers yeah, right. ski ergs bikes barbells, plates, kettle, everything. Yeah. So everyone had a piece of kit at home and everyone stuck by us and trained through that. So then obviously when you open the doors back up, you still had a good base of members to keep you going. Unfortunately, being the city and the way that you know working from home has changed, it has become a lot harder in the CBD um, with people you know doing the two, three day a week in here and working from home a couple of days a week. So that definitely has impacted us. Right. Um, but we're trying to find other ways of, you know, opening up, you know, eight sessions a month type packs and, okay, yeah. and things like that to try to get people who are training at home to still be able to train in here two days a week and have a gym membership at home. And that's where it's getting a little bit harder rather than having, you know, everyone in here five days a week, which 90% of our membership base pre-COVID used to be where everyone was training five days a week because they were in the office five days a week. Yeah, so we're having to pivot a little bit around yeah, that. that's business owning. What have, has been the biggest lesson that you've had since opening the doors to today? Like, what's the biggest thing that you've gone? Ooh, Whether it be good or bad? Lesson, yeah, biggest so. lesson. There's probably a lot that's coming oh, for to me, you right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, oh, I don't know, biggest yeah. lesson for me personally and like, I. I I should have probably practiced what I preach a little bit more in terms of my burnout. Like, you know, I'm always talking to people about pushing too hard in their jobs, coming in here, mm. smashing yourself for training, family commitments and all this sort of stuff and burnout. But once you get into that rut as a business owner and obviously I'm trying to save my business post COVID and come out of all those stresses and having a young family and all that mm. sort of stuff, I didn't really adhere to my own advice of, you know, having time out mm. and time down and push myself probably too hard. So I'd say, you know, only because it only happened a couple of months ago, that's probably the biggest lesson that I've had to learn is 
when I don't need to be in this business, it is time to switch off and you have to sometimes put yourself first, which I find very hard to do outside of here and go and have an hour of your own time before then you obviously smash into family life and everything else that you want to do. Sure. So that's probably the biggest lesson I've learned. What's the biggest misconception around a CrossFit gym? Um, oh, I, probably how hardcore and how dangerous it is. I'd, I'd say those are the two biggest misconceptions. If you go to a really good CrossFit gym, pretty much no matter your level, the coaches should be able to tailor a workout and scale it so you can get a really good workout done really safely without injuring yourself. And there are tons of CrossFit gyms out there that do that. And the biggest misconception is I need to be really fit to go to a CrossFit gym because I'm going to hurt myself if I don't. Now, don't get me wrong, there probably are a few gym owners and this goes for all modalities of gym training, not just CrossFit, that probably push a client too hard that can't do certain things and they hurt themselves. But if you go to a really good quality CrossFit gym and they know how to scale things accordingly, mate, we have, I mean, you can never say no injuries because we're still doing a physical sport, but mate, we have next to zero industry, uh, injuries in our gym because you know, we've got members that are cleaning 100 kilos and we've got members that are you know, on a barbell building up their fundamental, right? So everything is scalable if you're a good coach. And I think that's the biggest misconception that you will get hurt doing CrossFit because you shouldn't get hurt doing CrossFit. For sure, yeah. When you look at, I guess, the amount of people that are out there, who is B Athletic or CrossFit Athletic tailored to? Everyone, mate. It really is. Like, it, it's, it's a great, fun program. At the end of the day, it's functional fitness. Um, I mean, one of the reasons we rebranded, again, I'm pointing to the board, yes. um, one of the reasons why we rebranded is because we wanted to bring on a couple more programs. And that's the only reason. We're still an affiliated CrossFit gym. But our, our training and our modality is still all functional fitness, which at the end of the day, CrossFit is. But what makes CrossFit so fun is the competitive nature and the skill development that you get in it. So our other programs are still functional fitness programs like CrossFit is, but it allows people to come in who aren't necessarily wanting to do that high-end stuff and still be able to train in, in, sure. in a program. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I've got a tough one for you. Okay. Rich Froning, Matt Fraser. Yeah. Who's the GOAT and why? Um, I'm probably a little bit biased and only for probably nostalgic reasons for me. I was like in that real deep CrossFit mm. phase when Froning was around, right? Because yep. I'm a little bit older. Um, and I got to see him compete in, in the two World Games the that I went over and supported. Yeah, we were over there with well. our teams yep. and um, yep. competing over there in Madison. And uh, sorry, no, it wasn't in Madison then. It was at the Stub Hub yeah. in LA, LA that I went yep. to. Um, so I got to see him compete. I got to see him come home on one of the final workouts, I think, when he was sitting in second place mm. to bring it home and win it from there. So. I don't know, just those memories that I have of being there, I've always kind of, which I've never seen Matt Fraser compete in real life. Right, okay. So I haven't seen him personally. In saying that, I mean, if you look at Fraser, unbelievable athlete, him at his best against Froning at his best, I don't know, maybe leaning towards maybe Fraser. I think the closest we got was the regional workout when they went toe to toe, but Rich got him, but Matt was totally different mentally and physically at that stage to where he is now. So, um, it's I mean, kind of hard, isn't it? Very hard, man. Yeah. I mean, they're both absolute freak athletes, mm. right? And both have been amazing for the sport, but mm. more so, I think, just because I saw Froning compete, that's, that's my guy. It's like, you know, you're, the whole argument is Jordan better or LeBron better. Like, if you're an 80s or 90s kid, Jordan's the man. You know, if you were born in the early 2000s, LeBron and Kobe are the man, right? For so sure. it's just kind of, that's, I suppose, my way of explaining for sure, for why sure. I think so. Yeah. Have you got any plans to grow any big guys? Is there another sort of box, CrossFit box that you're kind of looking to grow? Or are you more about quality over, you know, potentially looking at that next step? Yeah, I mean, I'd never say never. Um, the hard thing when you grow, and I think any CrossFit owner would like it, is, is having the staff or the owner or, or someone that you trust that is going to then obviously represent your brand and have the same product. Um, because obviously you need the coaching quality. We've got the programs and the systems, but it is very hard to then replicate, you know, a gym owner and the, and the community and all that sort of stuff. So I would never leave here myself because this is like my baby that yep. I look after, right? So if someone came to us and we had a really good feel about them and they said we want to open another gym here, I would never say never if you, that was the path that we were going to go down. But it does, it is a lot of work to obviously get something started up and 
coming out of COVID, we've only just got the CBD gym back to kind of a, you know, a level playing field of where we need to be and actually grow from here. So I, I really wouldn't have the time at the moment, but look, in two or, two or so years, if we got the opportunity, I probably wouldn't yeah. say no. Is there much competition in the CBD for you guys? Yeah, I mean, you've got 168, which is down the road, who run a really good program. Um, I, I mean, I've never trained there, but I know a lot of people that have trained there and, and they're boxing Alexandria. Um, and I know that they do a, a good product as well. So, I, I mean, I know that they're good. Um, outside of that, we, there was a lot of F45s, um, but a lot of that has filtered out, um, especially since COVID. Uh, there was, I think, five in the CBD, yeah. um, which now I think are down to one in Martin Place. So yeah, there are functional fitness facilities. As far as CrossFits though, no, not too much. Right, okay. Is it hard, obviously we've talked about trying to get the staff, what is the, I guess, career ladder for someone just say i wanted to come in someone's watching this now and they're like okay what does it take firstly to become a crossfit coach mm. is there anything i have to do um and then what are the steps regarding to become a coach whether it be at you know crossfit athletic um yeah i mean well, CrossFit uh, becoming a good crossfit coach and i think this is what people are realizing is so difficult you actually need to become prolific at teaching and understanding and probably doing yourself to the most part so many different movements and that's what actually makes it a really hard sport to coach um, which also makes it a really fun sport to coach because obviously you're always coaching different mm. stuff right um, i personally would go on and this has always been like our hiring policy in here is more so if someone shows that they have passion um, if they absolutely love it they love training themselves they love coming into the gym they love being a part of the gym and the community and the members and being around the members Everything else is, you know, teachable off sure. the back of that, right? Um, and if someone's just got an awesome attitude and you can tell that they're going to be a big part of your community, I think that is really good. And then obviously you would start bridging them into teaching them, getting them to do, start doing some PT as well, some personal training mm -hmm. with one-on-one -on -one clients, um, and then start developing them in the higher end stuff, like, you know, start getting into your cleans, your snatch, your pull-ups, your muscle-up type stuff mm -hmm. as a coach. Or the Olympic lifting. Yeah. I think that's what some people realise or forget to realise about you know CrossFit coaching or weightlifting is that you're not coaching the movement, you're fault finding. Yep. You're trying to work out exactly what's going wrong with the movement and being able to correct it is a different thing. So mm -hmm. I couldn't agree anymore with you. What's been the biggest success that B Athletic and CrossFit Athletic has had since its inception? Um, big success, I would say the longevity of our businesses. Um, we've been around, Brookvale's been there since 2009 now, so that's coming up to 15 yeah, right. years. Um, we had our 10th birthday last year. We're, we're approaching 11 years in here. Um, with all the hardships, I think, especially for gyms and, and, you know, the changes in, you know, you've got all these different things like High Rocks coming in now, but, you know, we're, we're still lasting the test of time. I think that would be probably our biggest success. Um, and our second would probably be, I mean, outside of our competition type stuff, I think if you have a look and go back to those days, you know, teams, I think we had five or six teams compete in the World Games. We had two Masters athletes and two individual female athletes. We had an amazing competition program. Um, and then probably lastly, our community. I think those are the three best things that have come out of our gym. Yeah. Um, the community of people, i am got lifelong friends here that have moved from Australia to overseas and I'm still in touch with. I've got mates who I've seen have families in the gym who, you know, we've known for five, six, seven, eight years that come over and do social things with me and my family. So yeah, developed literally friendships that will last a lifetime. Lovely. We're going to do the GD3, so it's just three quick questions. Yep. Um, your thoughts and philosophies around nutrition. Nutrition, so, yeah. yeah, cool. Keep it simple. Um, I really think keep it simple. Um, eat clean, very simply, eat clean, as clean what as you can. What does that look like? Mate, if you walk into a supermarket and you look at something and you're like, and you're holding it and you're like, this is an apple, it's an apple. If you look at a <laughs> box of cereal and it's got 600 <laughs> ingredients on it, it probably isn't good for you, right? So eat whole foods, you know, veg, fruit, meats. If, if you're not into meats, obviously vegetarian, yeah. like finding your sources of protein, carbohydrates. Secondly, eat around your body type. Um, we're all genetically so different. So some people obviously can handle eating more carbohydrates than others. Some people need to have less calories based on what their body type is. Eat around what your body type and what works for you, um, I'd say is the second biggest one. And then like for most people, and the most common thing you get is people that want to lose body fat percentage, it's all about portion control. 
portion control is so important. You know, if you want to be really lean and have a six pack, you can't out train a poor diet. Like you can come in here and smash yourself every day, but if you're going and having, you know, cereal and fruit and yogurt and all that, that's got a thousand calories in your breakfast, well, you're going to undo all your hard work, right? So you need to then obviously start structuring how you eat around your training. Sure. and keep it really simple. Right. What does the next five years look like for Be Athletic? Um, ooh, that's a good question. I haven't been asked that one in a long time. Mate, I, I, I really enjoy what we're doing. Um, I, I don't, I, I love being in here with our members. I love our product. Um, so I, honestly, I think we're gonna keep on the same trajectory for a little while. Um, maybe in the CBD, we opened up um, a recovery studio out of our Brookvale gym, which has ice bars and saunas. Um, as a recovery studio and that's obviously really really popular down there so we will potentially be looking at, at building something hopefully like that in this in the city coming soon so then getting into a little bit more that recovery side so that's something to look forward to for us potentially if we can actually get it up and running in here um, outside of that mate now just keep chugging along and obviously getting back to what I would like as a business owner to being where we were pre-covid which is, is my goal for sure last thing what are you grateful for? Oh, mate, so much, um, so much. I've got the most amazing family. Um, my, both our, my parents, my dad comes and works in here on a Monday oh. to see the community. My mum and dad both go to our Brookie gym and train down there. My partner used to train in here before kids and working oh. from home. Um, I've got the most amazing boys. I've got an epic, epic team in here. Um, we've got such a good staff. We're very close, so I've got really good support around here. I've got the best members in the world in here, mate. People that, as I said before, have supported me so much, especially over the last few months. Man, I've got so much, so much good, good things going on in life. Yeah, and I live on the northern beaches in Sydney, which is not a too, too bad a place to, to obviously spend weekends and, and raise a family. Love it. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Thanks, Pete. bro. My I'm pleasure. I'm looking forward to seeing everything in the future with you guys, and uh, yeah, we'll chat soon. Thank you. No really appreciate so it.